Hey, how's it going everyone? Justin again. As always, thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. I hope you're getting ready to enjoy your weekend with your family and try to relax. So, cheers to you. Ah, hold my lip. At any rate, today's discussion topic is going to be about how confidence promotes competence or how competence promotes confidence. How does it work? How do you get better at what it is that you're trying to do? How do you become more faster? How do you feel more comfortable with what it is you're getting ready to take apart? Let's talk about that for a minute. So for the longest time, and those of you that have been following me for a little while, you already know, uh, I used to work at a loop tire shop before I got my big break working at a dealership. <coughs> The uh, first time around working at the dealership, it didn't work out. I think I was there like four months. Uh, that really took a toll on my confidence and my abilities as a mechanic or aspiring automotive technician. So I took a leave of absence pretty much after I lost that job. I uh, got into roofing, started doing some side work, did some solar for a little bit, ended up working for a towing company. And then I was like, the interest re-sparked inside me and I was like, you know, I really want to get this another go. I want to know if I'm actually going to be any good at doing this or if it's just like something that I should have never got into, you know. Uh, and I went to college for it too, so it's a lot to think about while you're trying to, you know, go for this dream. So I applied at one of the local dealerships that we have in our small town. As luck would have it, uh, things would pan out. And I had just started my YouTube channel prior to uh, getting my first job at the towing company and was continuing uh, doing the YouTube stuff while I got my first job as a Chrysler technician. And I didn't start at the top, I started at the bottom. Uh, I started at like $10 an hour. Um, I wasn't allowed to have tools there at the shop in the beginning. I ended up signing a waiver stating that I uh, wasn't going to sue them for not paying me what I was supposed to get paid for having my tools on scene so that way I can have them there because when you have your own tools you just feel more comfortable about what it is that you're doing instead of having to run around to three or four different toolboxes and collecting other people's tools and utilizing them when they probably need them for a job. I wanted my own shit. I wanted my own stuff there. So I signed a waiver uh, and I got my own tools there. And, uh, you know, within a month, they had me pulling an engine. And I had never pulled an engine out of a Chrysler car before. Uh, most of the engine pulls I did was out of race cars and, you know, things within college. You know, we, we pulled one out of an old muscle car. Stuff that's really easy to get to. Bolts and fasteners that were really easy to get to. So I didn't know, you know, what my confidence level was. It was pretty low. My confidence level was also kind of low because all I had was the two years in automotive school plus the two years at a lube tire shop. So I wasn't really sure I was prepared for that. It took me a little bit longer than it does now. You know, uh, I removed some things obviously that I didn't mean to remove or didn't know that I didn't need to take off in order to get the job done. And I got progressively faster and faster at taking apart, you know, engines and transmissions and transfer cases and rear ends and whatnot at the Chrysler dealership. Uh, I got so good at what it was that I did for them that I actually, uh, my confidence level was through the roof and I felt that my competence level was through the roof so much that I made a bold decision to leave and go to an independent shop. I went to the independent shop, I started working on a lot of other manufacturers, cars, BMW, Lexus, Toyota, Nissan, Chevy, and I started to lose confidence because I was not unfamiliar with that product line, unfamiliar with how everything worked, didn't know if it was timing chain or timing belt, had no idea what the hell I was working on, had no idea if I could remember where all the fasteners went, and I had talked about this in the past about learning the nuts and bolts of things as a mechanic, not necessarily a technician. As a mechanic, someone that takes something apart and puts it back together, you get really, really used to knowing and understanding where every fastener goes. You could throw a whole bunch of Chrysler bolts into a tray and ask me what goes where and I could tell you. 
it's not that way when you start working on other product lines. So I was in this big mess. My head was clouded. I was like, I can't do this. I'm not made for this. You know, uh, it took me a few years to learn the product line for Chrysler. Maybe that's where I'm supposed to be. I, I, I was losing confidence fast. Just did not want to even be there or do anything. So I tried to go back to a Chrysler dealership um, and things weren't uh, as gravy as they used to be. You know what I mean? I wasn't known as the heavy line guy. They wanted me to do a lot of other shit. They wanted me to, uh, to diag things, be the drivability guy, do electrical stuff, all of which I never did. Did interior breakdowns and whatnot. And they started chomping my hours down. So I wasn't there for a full work day. I was there for like a half day, if that. I'd be there, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning, 7.30 in the morning. And by like 11, noon, I was being clocked off and told to go home. So this was really devastating to my charisma and my, my confidence level was just, just going down. And I didn't understand it. I didn't understand what the hell was going on. It felt like I was being shoved out. So... I went in to quit. I went in to take my toolbox and leave. Sat down with the manager, had a heart to heart. You know, and he's like, we're gonna give it another go. Please don't leave, you know, stick around. Let's let's give you let's give it another month, you know, we'll see if we can't shove you some more work. I'll try to make it to where you're like the last person that goes and whatever. And that didn't really happen. They they still sent me home early, just not as early. The work was still not as busy as I thought it was going to be. And I had to make a split decision at the time. Uh, I had a, uh, a OEM part and I was supposed to change this out for this person's car. And uh, the, the old part worked just fine and I got it mixed up and I fucked up and long story, short story, I, uh, I got fired. So I ended up leaving like within two weeks of that one month trial period. This whole time, during the time that I felt like I was going to quit, to the time that I got fired, I was staying in contact with my old employer at the independent shop. Uh, you know, letting them know that I think I made a mistake, wanted to come back, et cetera, et cetera. Was willing to come back as a lube tech, you know, at the bare minimum, you know, the minimum wage standard, $10 an hour. Came back and um, I did so progressively well. And within two weeks, he was like, I'm not going to start you at the $10 an hour. That's what we agreed upon. But I'm going to start you at something different. And I said, okay. And he told me, and it was a little bit less than what I had originally uh, was receiving before I had left the first time. But I was like, you know, at this point, I'm just accepting it. I'm just like, you know what? I need a job. I need to pay bills. I got kids. I don't care. It could be $10 an hour. It could be $15 an hour. So confidence, confidence out the window. I was more focused on making sure I could provide for my family. And that was what it was all about. So I came back into it full bore and started to see uh, a different light. I, I started seeing everything in a different light. I was no longer concerned about what it was that I was working on or how I was going to be able to get it back together. I was more concerned about like this is it. This is my only chance. I got to make this work or I'm not going to have a paycheck and I'm not going to be able to provide for my family. So I started remembering where everything went and I would try to get it done faster and faster and faster. So I would get transmission jobs in and out and done in a day. I would get, you know, radiators done and in and out in a couple hours. And I, you know, I just started getting faster and faster and my confidence started to go up. And uh, I had an engine job that somebody else had started, but they were taking too long on. And I ended up uh, finishing it in less than half a day. Uh, they were so impressed, they actually sent me home for the rest of the day, but paid. They paid me for the rest of the day just to go home and, and relax with the family. I didn't have to worry about anything. So you're not in trouble, just go home and relax. Uh, it took him a week to do what you did in four hours. Just go. So I did. And uh, lately, you know, the more cars that I'm working on, I'm doing more transmissions, I'm doing more engines, I'm starting to do a lot more diesel work, and I hate diesels, believe me. I hate diesels, but I'm getting it. So I always make the joke in the beginning of the day, I'm like, what transmission job or diesel truck am I working on today? And it just so happens to be a diesel job or a transmission. So I find it to be humorous at this point in time. Uh, but I started thinking about this and I was like, maybe it's something I can share with everybody, you know? Maybe it's something I can uh, tell you guys about and let you guys know that like, 
it's not all bad and you cannot stay focused on the past. You have to stay focused on the future. For me, it was difficult to accept the fact that I was no longer going to get to that Chrysler Master Certification platform. I was really concerned about that too. That was another reason why I wanted to go back. You have six months before you lose all your certs and you have to start all over. And the second thing was I wasn't sure if I wanted to work on other product lines, but at this point, I'm progressively getting faster and faster. And there's always somebody there to help me out. You know, with the transmission jobs I've been getting lately, seems like I'm having to drop the subframe out of more and more cars. And what a pain in the ass. But I got the shop owner there, got my buddy Shane there. I got John, we're just, we're, we're taking care of business, man. We're getting stuff done. We're, it's just in and out. If I need a hand, I tell them, hey, I need like two or three extra set of hands to grab this subframe and lower it down and get it out of my way so I can pull the trans. And they're there, they're on top of it. And uh, I'm excited about that. And I'm getting progressively faster. So my confidence level is now like way up here. My confidence level is getting pretty close to my confidence level as a result. Because I am working on different manufacturers. I am starting to get into a rhythm. I'm starting to learn the nuts and bolts of things when it comes to these different manufacturers. I'm starting to recognize similarities between the two, like Nissan, Lexus, Ford, Jaguar, BMW, all these different vehicles. I'm starting to learn all the little tips, tricks, and secrets and things of being able to get around certain things. There was a uh, BMW starter that I had to do that you had to pull the intake on. And I think I had the intake and everything off, the starter put in and everything all back together within like three hours. And it took the, the last guy, it took him like two days. So that's what I'm told. And I like that. I like that I'm being told like how long it took somebody else, not because I want to be better than everybody else, just because it makes me feel better to know that, hey, I'm doing better than I thought I was. Because here I'm thinking, I'm going too slow. It's not going as fast as I need to. I ran into this hiccup. I needed to do this and I forgot this and I need to do this. But I'm actually getting it done in a fraction of the time and I'm like, okay, cool. The shop's making money. That means the boss is happy. That means I'm happy. The customer's gonna be happy because I got it all done and everything's good to go. So you become really, really confident and the confidence starts to build. But it builds off of different jobs that you do. There's another couple of transmissions that I've done that we needed done within, you know, the eight hours. And it called, book called for like 16. And I've been able to get them done within a day. And I'm just like, fuck, that was hard. There were a lot more bolts, a lot more specialty products and everything else that you needed to throw special tools on. And we got it done. So killer stoked that I was able to get it done in a fraction of the time because I just had what I needed at the time. And I didn't go into the job thinking, I can't do this. That was the biggest problem that I had when I first got on with the independent shop, was as I was going through changing out small components and going to the major components, I was my, in my mindset, I was thinking, I can't do this. There's too many special bolts, there's too many vacuum lines, there's too much special tools that are required that I don't have. I can't do this, like I started freaking out. Nowadays, I'm like, well, somebody's going to have the special tool. Somebody's going to have the answer of how to move this where. Um, my boss gave me the thumbs up to take little video clips here and there to remember where vacuum lines went. They pull up vacuum diagrams for me and everything else. And somehow it just all works and able to get the job done and the customer satisfied. So that's what it's all about. So we're going to wrap this up on this. If you're just starting off and your confidence level is low and your competency level is low, give it time. Don't be afraid to jump into the next project. Don't be afraid to take something apart you've never taken apart before. Don't be afraid of how much time it takes you to get something done. Just start taking nuts and bolts off. Try to stay as organized as you can, whether you're like, okay, couple of magnetic trays, couple of empty tubblewares, this is all for the top. All the bolts from right side go on the right side leg on the lift. All the bolts from the left side go on the left side leg of the lift. And then we're all done and then you, you're set. You have everything organized the way that you want to be organized and you can get the job done like that. Just think about the organization that you need in order to actually complete the job 
and then work from there. That, that's all I got for this video, guys. Thanks as always for watching. Again, cheers to those of you that have your beers, and enjoy the weekend. We'll see you guys next time. Do something with the family. Peace.